everyone and welcome to day seven of my 12 days of Christmas series. I'm sorry for the delay but I am back with the final six videos so keep tuned. I'll be releasing them over the next couple of days um, and today's video is going to be a shaker card. So I'm taking some blue cardstock from Simon Says Stamp and I'm just cutting this down to four inches by eight and then I'm scoring it along the middle at four inches. I decided to make a slightly smaller card today um, and I'm just using my Teflon bone, bone folder. Um, I'd really recommend getting a Teflon bone folder because it doesn't leave any marks on any of your cardstock. So I've just took a circle die and taped that in place. I decided to use one that would fit perfectly around the merry and bright sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another piece of cardstock down to 4 inches by 4 inches. And this will essentially be the front panel of the card. And I'll then put all of the shaker material in between the front panel and the um, card front. So I'm just lining these two pieces up and I'm going to take that circle die again and tape it in place and then run that through my die cutting machine. So now I've got those two pieces of card both with the circle cut inside. So I've took the circle stamp and the merry and bright and I'm just inking those up with Versamark and I'm going to stamp that down on some heat resistant acetate. So I've never used heat resistant acetate before, but if you do plan on doing any kind of heat embossing, then this is the type of acetate that you need because the normal acetate, the plastic will just sort of melt and warp um, and it won't be very nice at all. So I'll have a link in the description below to all of the supplies used, um, including this heat resistant acetate. So I also didn't use any anti-static embossing powder. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and flick this really hard and it does all of the sort of stray embossing powder does come off really easily. So I'm just heat embossing that as normal. I'm only allowing the heat from the uh, heat gun to be on the acetate for a couple of seconds at a time just to make sure that I don't get any warping and you can see there that that's embossed perfectly um, with no warping whatsoever. So I'm using some double sided sticky tape to stick this down to the front panel and then I can start building up a well for my shaker material. So because the circles are cut through not only the front panel but also the front of the card, I just need another piece of acetate on the back, um, not on the back, sorry, on the front of the card there to make sure that nothing spills through inside the card. So I've doubled up some foam tape and now I'm just using the pattern design on this 3M foam tape to cut um, sort of angles. I don't know, I think I'm a bit of a crazy person. I like to do this whenever I'm creating um, a card with a lot of foam tape. I just think it looks nicer. The first thing that people tend to do when they get a shaker card is they sort of tilt the card to the side and they try and take a look sort of how did you create this um, sort of raised box area with all the sequins so I think if you sort of um is it called mitering if you mitre the corners I don't know it's something that you would do um with kind of like woodwork if you're replacing the skirting boards or things like that in your house but you know this isn't as fancy it's just making cards <laughs> but it makes a really nice sort of clean edge so if someone does tilt this card which is exactly what everybody I've ever given a shaker card to um does then it just means they're looking at a nice clean edge so another way to achieve that would be to use craft foam instead. Um, and you could I could have done that and just die cut a circle in the middle to have that area for the sequins, but this was just as easy. Okay, so now I'm applying some anti-static powder tool onto the front of this um, card panel. And the idea was that I was going to stamp down a whole load of these little stars and then I was going to emboss them in gold. But once I started stamping, I actually really liked the tone-on-tone -tone look that the Versamark ink gives. So Versamark is actually, um, not only is it great for embossing, but it's actually a watermark ink. So it will sort of leave that pattern that's not just only showing up because the ink is wet. Okay, so now I'm just using a scrap piece of paper as almost like a little spoon and I'm just filling the inside of this shaker well with some sequins. I actually got these when I was over in America. I picked them up at, I believe it was a Walmart um, or it might have been Target, I don't know. Um, but I won't be able to link those in the description section below but I will link some plain sequins. 
Okay, so I'm just pressing that all down firmly in place so when I give this card a shake, nothing falls out. Um, I'm really pleased with how this looks, but I decided it just needed a little something on the inside. Um, because that shaker area is completely see-through, sort of straight through to the inside of the card, I thought it might be quite nice to have something stamped inside. So again, I'm going to go for that watermark look, and I'm going to stamp the little tree and the present from the same stamp set. So excuse how messy my uh, stamp block is there. Um, I think I had some white pigment ink that I haven't cleaned off it properly. Okay, so there you have it. That is today's card. I hope you like it. If you have liked it, then please do hit like, or if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos from me. Apologies for the sound of my voice. As you can hear, I have a bit of a cold. Um, that will carry through for the rest of the series, so apologies in advance. Um, on screen right now are a couple more videos that I thought you might enjoy. So if you haven't already, do check those out, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.